thank you for tuning in. Hi, uh, I'm Kate, and um, well, I like to do games uh, on the on the yearly live stream that most people wouldn't. So here's what uh, this is what I'm going for this year. This is a game that was originally um, released for the um, uh, Game Boy Advance in Japan and it was re released for the Nintendo DS for. Um, for the rest of the world. There's, there's, well, there's a lot of Ace Attorney games in total. There's the trilogy that's uh, in this set. There's also a fourth game that's only on iOS and um, uh, uh, DS. A pair of uh, 3DS games and a couple of spin-offs. But for the purposes, of um, uh, introducing this game to anybody who's not yet familiar with the series, this is what um, this. I'm going to play the first game and go with the first case. <laughs> Jackson! <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I'm sorry, Kate. I just had to. <laughs> it's an absolute necessity with this game. Have you ever played these games before, Laura? Not really, mm. but I've heard about it. Mm. Uh -oh. you're... If you're interested, you can watch. I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, sure, mm. <laughs> While I play New Super Mario Brothers on the DS, I got all these slides. Mm, that, that sounds good. Uh, so I play a splish up a bit so uh, I can use it pretty much. Yeah, we have a guest, everyone. This is Laura. She... <laughs> and she's never played this game, so... I've heard about it, though. Yeah. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, hi, Chief. I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. What is it? <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm just avoiding those little uh, spiky pillars. I see. Good luck with that. Bowser and his spike, okay? It's over! My life! Screaming, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, I'm gonna, do it. I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Ugh, yeah. Ugh. Egg! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I am so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Descendants, I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's a lover. Finished. Finished. Can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me? Then? Who did this? Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it's you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm into voice acting myself. 
Uh, I'm probably going to have a very dry throat when this is all over, which is where this comes in. My beautiful, beautiful Fanta. <clears throat> My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Yeah, the names tend to be puns. <laughs> Our school had a saying that when something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has an act for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone. He's a good guy at heart. That, and I know him, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do. Huh? Out of the frying pan and into the fire. We're in court. Hmm. Yeah, this is very much based on the Japanese court system, by the way. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, is this, your first, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. Um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. I hope for your client's sake, you can control your nerves. But thank you, Your Honor. Mr. White, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, hands shaking. My sight fading. This test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant, aka the guy who's being accused. That's Larry. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Keep your wits about you and you'll be fine. Next question. Well done. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? I know this one. Glad I read the case report to cover so, cover so many times. It's... Wait, uh, oh! Oh, wait! Oh god! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim! Uh, of course, I know the victim thing! Just forgot! Temporarily! I don't think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? This is the court record! Uh, all the evidence, as well as profiles of the people involved in this case, is stored within the court record. You can review it at any time. For now, let's take a look at what's the most essential evidence for any murder trial, the autopsy report. It's, uh, it belongs to Cindy Stone. So that's the victim's name. Remember to check it out and do it for me, please, I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? So obvious with the puns. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... According to the autopsy report, she was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all of my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relevant to story. Good for you. Your Honor, if I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. What? Well then. First, 
a question for the prosecution, Mr. Pierce. Yes, Your Honor. Nope. Oh, Come on. Come on. I wasn't expecting this much attention. Trouble, Connor. You're trouble. You can put a bell on the Who's on? Who's on? Me. I'm, I'm playing Ace Attorney. Move your head, move your head. Not We have more visitors. Has Mr. Wright just told us the victim was struck with a blunt object? Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the finger. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. No thanks, I'm good. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. And of course during investigation, but we'll get to that in the next case. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button and check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention! You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh oh, there he gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? I want you, buddy! What did you do? You ever made a wrong man with Juliet? Also, after Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? That was a dumb, she just was taking the tingles. You're seeing me. Never. What did he do anyway? But what you described is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. One of them. Lies, but lies, I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passive. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. No, no way. No thanks, I'm good. I ate for okay. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears she has several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her life. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Hutt, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want to answer that question. Yeah, Mary has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Shut him up. Shut him up. My client had no idea the victim was seeing of a man. That question is irrelevant to this case. Don't think we're irrelevant. Cheating she dog. Gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. She probably had a nightmare. That's like the other nightmares in the Catherine before she died. Maybe. <laughs> you get the reference though, you hun. Yep, yep. <laughs> And Catherine, the men who uh, yeah. cheat on their significant other sort of witness. Mm. Yeah. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accursed, the, the accused's motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? Shut him up. I'll send him in. 
signal. Fly like a dog. Let's see. I don't remember. You don't remember. Well, I need to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. No, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Okay, order. Wow. <laughs> this is too much, sorry. Well, yeah, well, it's easy to mistake this place for the food court. Food court's next door. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. <sighs> Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. Yeah. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sowick to the sand. Yeah, by the way, this guy's name is a pun on Frank Sorin. And the prosecutor is Winston Payne. I think you can get the pun with that. <laughs> so, this game's full of puns looking like the annoying orange. It's mostly, it's mostly puntastic names. But there's also the stepladder debate. Mr. Sowick, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, yeah. newspapers, yes. Mr. Sowick, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. I thought he was in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, he walked inside the apartment. And I saw her lying there. Not moving. Dead! I quailed and cried and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public place. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Harry, he didn't even tell the truth as we stopped him. I can't defend you against some testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Yo, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Are phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sowich used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. So it was out from noon to 6 p.m. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. Cross examination, Your Honor? Alright, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? You would lie? Your client is innocent, right? That, then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, Present it and rub it in the witness's face! Okay, open the court record with the R button and point out one of the victims in the testimony. Okay, this is the main meat of the game. Cross-examination. 
we can go uh, backwards and forwards through this guy's testimony. And there are two main options open to us. One of them's not going to be useful uh, for this case. Uh, uh, the other one is presenting evidence. As you can see, there's a blue gauge in the corner essentially a health gauge or a credibility gauge more like. Once it reaches uh, zero, it's, it's game over. But as long as you present the correct evidence, you don't need to worry. So then, there must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's take a look at the evidence we can present. Uh, in the first game, you can only present uh, evidence. You cannot present profiles. However, during the uh, during the second and third games, uh, you can present profiles. Let's see. We've got a blackout record. The electricity was out from noon till 6 p.m. Passport that the victim returned home from Paris the day before the murder. The statue aka the murder weapon in the shape of a finger, and Cindy's autopsy report died at four, somewhere between 4 to 5pm due to loss of blood force trauma. Yes, Think you know? You got it! You got it! Now, we've got our contradiction. Which means you get to the Part and the witness is said to be that the contradiction. Press R to open the court record, highlight the evidence you want to present, then press X to present it. Objection! Objection! You found the body at 1 pm. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Her statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. Nice fun, <laughs> How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, oh, that oh, oh. This is trivial. The witness nearly forgot the time. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a bit of a cough. Not COVID, I promise. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. the suckers. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I. Jeez, that's a really a good question. Oh, great job, right? Wait to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. Through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? A recording of the tape's program. I see you heard the, a voice saying the time on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Great, you know what to do. I got this one. Excuse me a second. So then, a video of a taped program. Could that possibly be the case? Let's check the records. A 
Objection! <laughs> Hold it right there! The prosecution has said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it! I think the sound's gone out in the thing. Uh, oh, uh, well, it's still in the game picture. That's good enough for me. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Oh, well. Uh, well done! The defense has a point. You have an explanation for this, Mr. Sarwick? Oh, I find it quite puzzling myself. Ah. Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sarwit, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That do you seem rather distraught. Oh, it's easier than that. It must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sarwit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Hmm. Actually, I didn't hear the body. You saw it. He saw it. <laughs> there was a cable clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. The murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the that must have been what I saw. Oh well. If you haven't noticed that, um, that contradiction almost immediately, well, I pity you. <laughs> Joking aside, <laughs> it's a pretty easy one. You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. So the defense may cross examine the witness. Gladly. If you're wondering how he's been able to get away with so many obvious lies, the uh, general rule of thumb is the, that the defendant is guilty not un is not innocent until proven guilty, nor is she they are they even guilty until proven innocent. They are guilty until someone else is proven guilty in their place. <laughs> Objection! Wait just a moment! The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was a statue! Now how is this supposed to be a clock? <laughs> With your objection, everyone! What do you think you are? Let's answer the question, Mr. Sawit. I start there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, for me. Yes, Mr. Pooh. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The net is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I suddenly admitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. But the murder weapon was a table clock after all. No, Mr. Rogers. It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Any problems with his testimony now? Do we have problems with his testimony? Yes, we do. It contradicted his previous claim. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Didn't you? The witness knew it was a clock. Because... Went into... Because you are lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed him. He struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Oh, 
that's a pretty decent running gag. Continue, Mr. Right. Yes, Mr. Honor. Mr. Solid, the sound must have left quite some impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice is burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Eating at this! This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! Yeah. If the witness can't for another, you do strike the, the victim with the clock! That day, I never will find the clock! No, I heard. No, I saw. So. Ah! Sha sha sha! I hate you! It was him, I tell you! I saw him! He killed her and he should burn! Give him death! Now, in an ordinary court of law, that would be enough to cast reasonable doubt. What? <laughs> Needless to say, remember how the court system in this game works. Guilty until someone else is proven guilty in your place. What? Your Honor, a moment, please. There is a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honor, you claim the sound of witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? He's riding on it. I better think it for carefully. Your Honor, the sound of the solid heard was definitely this clock. That is clear if you simply sound the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That's certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker. So we What are your conclusions? Mr. P, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. <laughs> As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this. You got one thing! What's he talking about now? Well, he seems like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running slow on the day of the murder? If you don't prove that, you don't have a case! What's that? What's that? I'm so close. Mr. Rowe, you seem to like the crystal lovers in this court of play. Yes, Mama. That means I cannot let you indict the witness. I'm dead. And it's only the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowett. I'm going to get away over here to test him. And look what happens. A criminal! A criminal! Lawyer or slime! I almost had him! Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Oh, not so fast, Mr. Sawit. No, and he cheat! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away! Not like this! Thing! But she never! Can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder! Nobody can prove that! Yeah. Well, yes, but that's a thing! Can't still win! How can he help the ox? Don't waste time doubting the fact! Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it! Ask yourself, 
Why would the pop play out as slow? Take her out the wings and she'll have your proof. Right, Mr. Wright? Wait! Maybe I can prove it. We must have evidence somewhere that can prove it. Right. Find it and let them have it. So, oh, Mr. Wright, you said the clock is already running slow on the day of the moon. We found the evidence to support this claim. Of course, there's a pers there is a piece of evidence in the court records that can prove my claim beyond any doubt. <laughs> Top floors. Let's this one on. Why the fuck is running three hours slow? Hmm. Ever heard of time zones? The, the victim had just returned home from abroad the day of the murder. But, as we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. But it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. Oh, and uh, a side note, um, in the original game, and well, in the uh, Japanese version, as well as the anime, this place, this all takes place in Japan. So it's um, so so uh, so it's so in uh, so the so um, the victim went to America in the Japanese version. Uh, yeah, sorry, tongue my tongue twisted. Why um, was it three hours slow? Nine hours fast! The victim hadn't prepared her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when he struck her dead in the apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit. What should I say? What should I say, Mr. Did it? <laughs> Someone call the vet, this guy has rabies. Can I take your order, Judge? Uh, order. Well, this is certainly this case is certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete an offense so quickly. I'd find a true comfort at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Yes! And there we go! Our first case is, has been solved, and we've let an idiot onto the streets. <laughs> Run free, you stupid idiot. Run free. And with that, court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, it's just how it let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Job in there. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You bought your own balance in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong with you? 
Good. Wait, no, no, I mean, bad, 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 bad. Sorry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Was I sparkle? Yep. Like a vampire. Good. My Cindy Windy is gone, man. Gone forever. Sorry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treats. He moved on fast. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, who's the one who got you off the hook? Oh, hey! Here, take this! It's a present! A present? Me? Wait, who's the evidence that... Actually, I made this hot for her. I made one for her and one for me. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. That's what works in wisdom. Say, how about dinner? And me? We'll drink a toast to kiss and butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you are seen part of the reason why you became a lawyer was because of him. Yeah, for at least. You'll have to tell me more about it. to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I wouldn't be able to keep. That's the end of case one. Hmm. Case number of dogs. Yeah, what do you think of it? I really like the concept of the series. Uh, 
didn't it once cross over with Professor Layton? Yes, yes it did. It did. I'd, I'd forgotten to mention that earlier. Yeah. It also has an anime that covers the trilogy. <laughs> It's a good one. Mm-hmm. I definitely recommend it. But and <laughs> Phoenix Wright's uh, eyebrows. Yep. They're yep. nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that always the case? Let's go, let's take a look at them. Let's, I think we still have plenty of time to take a look at the second case. Hello, this is Maya. Hey Maya, it's me. Yeah, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, you've been so busy. How you been? Well, recently, it's all your fault. I thought the case was. Well done. Thank you. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm not getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm not just because I have a favor to ask. No, I know. For you. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that still watching the thinker. And it tells you the time. Yeah, I thought you might like it. You always like it. Girl anymore, sis? No, no. Hmm, it's easy. I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working. I'm winning! You have to take the clock work out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence? Hmm, well, there's a possibility it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight? Say nine to pick it up? I'll be in a free trial with you until then. Okay, sis. Well, I expect dinner. Something good. Like burgers! I could really go for a good burger! You and me both. You and me both. I'm just joking. I ate before time. Okay, okay. I'll hit the usual joint. Absolutely nothing can go wrong. We're all gonna have burgers. <clears throat> now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How did you know? Oh, you are not omniferous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I should have been more careful. Oh, oh, my dear Miss Bay, I am so very sorry. But I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence. Oh, well, Miss Faye. Red. And that was white, blue, like uh, the British flag. <laughs> and what I'm playing now, folks, is a. Uh, the first Cooking Mama game for the Nintendo DS. Oh, yeah. Oh, that brings back memories for me. Yeah. Hmm. By the way, the uh, the first two cases in the series are the only cases that uh, I can really recall that uh, where you actually see the murderer in the um in the opening section like that. You gotta figure it out for yourself and all the others. Uh oh, I'm late. 
That's strange. I guess the cheese left without me. Uh, she said her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you for reminding me. You do. You do. She said her sister was coming over, so we should all go out for dinner. What's that sound? Blood? Mio! Maybe she's in her office. Yep. We're in investigation mode now. We have a couple of different options, but for now, let's move to the office. Smell blood. That's how vampire would smell blood. Someone's there. Chief? Chief? Chief! I hope she's ultimately alive. Oh, the chief? No, she's dead. Damn. Oh, she's coming back. Shh. Still dead. No spoilers. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> that strange girl dropped her cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it and I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally, she was cold. Okay, now we're in investigation mode. We have this little magnifying glass we can move around. I'm going to make um, seafood spaghetti. Oh. Very nice. Anyways, it lights up when we yeah, when when there's something we can check out. Chief, it's hard seeing her like this. Are there any clues here? She was struck on the head with a blunt object. Probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. There are splash shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stand when he's laying broken on the other side in the back of the room. Nothing else. Nothing else that seems like a clue. Oh, it's a paper. It must have fallen from Mia's hand. Look at the cookie. Word is written in blood on the scrap of paper. Maya? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store dated yesterday. I think that's enough sneaking around for now. I better call the police. Find out what this girl was doing here. Oh yeah, so you can press L in during investigation segments to uh, to go from one side of the room to the other, assuming that the room is big enough. Anyway, call the police. Right, you better call the police. That's funny. You have the screws and the receiver on this thing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Please! Please! Come quick! What was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. Well, at the very least, uh, calling the police has been taken care of. So let's check on that girl. That girl's just now. Where'd she go? Put her right there on that sofa. The squid. Well done. Thank you. Uh oh. Hope she didn't run on me. Yes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but. It's okay, we work here. Yeah. Why are you Faye? Maya. Faye? Maya? So Mia was writing this girl's name. 
Anything I should show her the receipt? I never thought to take these for happening from the outside of the courtroom. Yeah, I saw it from examining um, the room or moving about. You can also talk to witnesses and or ask them about the evidence you currently have in your possession. Show her the receipt and see what she says. Before Mia died, she wrote a message in her own blood. She wrote it on the back of the receipt. That's what I mean! Why did she write my name? Please just calm down. Sister Maya was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. And I get to make fried chicken. Wow. Now that's making me hungry. My eyes were heavy. No, no, it's good. It's fine. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Should I the next door? Oh! It's you! Good morning! 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 Good She's very cute. Are you going to be my attorney? I better give it to you. It's up to you. To me? I don't think this is something I should decide. After all, you're the one that's in trouble here. In court. Oh, what a real trip to go! It was quite the scene. Honestly, he was on the edge the whole time. It's been a while. So, he crashed and burned? He's a genius. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Oh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to get to if I ever get in trouble now. Oh, I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. That's what she said. 
sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. Take some of my um. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. Not unless there's fried chicken. Indeed. Praise be to the fried chicken gods. When I think of the person who did this to Mia. I know. What's with that outfit? This? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? It's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium. In training. of our boss, but who we don't know. Thank you so much. You have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? Did they order pizza? Because I'm going to make some. Uh, I see. Don't worry. Leave with me. Thank you. Kyle's tomorrow at 10. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? He told me that if I don't mind, the state will take an attorney to defend me. Who will that happen? They're 15 till 4 this afternoon. Visiting Andrew will stop at the Fair Murray. Right, I'll be back. Now I'll be right back. Let's head to the crime scene.
The office is filled with police officers. They're all busily searching for clues. Hey, you better! This is a crime scene, pal! No trespassing! Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. Did anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name. It's so, right. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? At least he's no Larry Laffer from Lush Suit Larry. He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were... So tempting, tempting, <gasps> tempting, tempting. Should have gone with sweet shoes. Gumshoe, wasn't it? Dick Gumshoe? Why? You're a service. Hang on, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name. And don't go call me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here! <laughs> yes, sir! Be right there! You're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. He thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. How about Miss Faye? Did you do an autopsy? You want to know the results, right? Look at me like that, pal. No use. I might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. See the report, but that's all. Single blunt force, single hit to the head with the thinker. Death was instantaneous. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't gonna win. Why did you say that? Say he's put Prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? Look what I made, guys! A pizza face! <laughs> I'm sure you know what that means, being a lawyer and all. Even if you're a pizza face? It's funny, it's funny. Edgewa. I'll say you're Edgewa. That's right, Kyle. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Anyone up for pizza after this call? Thanks. <laughs> Boy, you do know him, don't you? I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain, he doesn't feel remorse. Have fun! See you a bit! He won't stop until he gets a guilty verdict. Oh, don't talk about him that way, you think you barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So, Edward is on this one. He hasn't lost his case since he became a prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forced evidence. All I know for sure, though, is Edgeworth hates crime. They have an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I could face him so soon. Right then, we came to this office for a reason. And now stay at the phone. I was wondering, did you see my face cell phone? Oh, that? I have it. Do you think you could give it back? Sure. I mean, where is us? Dick Kyle. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Lie, lie. Okay, I can't be straight. What should I tell him? What's up in the matter? No, um, that carrying strap on the cell phone. This well is. It says Steel Samurai, Warrior of New Old Tokyo. Steel Samurai, the tags in here on TV. Yeah, you see that strap is an electric item that she was worried it might get lost if it went down to the precinct. Is that what she said? Mm, yeah. 
Erica. Ow. I wrote down all the number T called anyway. There you go. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Guess I've asked all the questions I need to. Y'all done, bro? Yes, thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. <laughs> the witness? Yeah, Miss Eichel Manic. Sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me your name. Well, Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? <laughs> You're trying your lawyerly tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room till the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. Yeah, I got that right, Kyle. I'm going to pay a visit to Miss May. Gumshoe is a much beloved character. He's the detective of pretty much every case in the trilogy. So, get used to him. Let's visit the witness then, shall we? <laughs> oh, hello there, Hanson. Um, uh, uh, so bright, real smooth. Even the lawyer, right? The detective told me. Don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. And what is that? Thank Detective Gumption for making my job hard.
It's clear she's not planning to cooperate. So let's see if we can actually get that lawyer. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the most over the top clearing up the I've ever had. Huh? So you're the one you say has been looking for. Yes, that's me. It looks even grander than I imagined. Switch on your cock. Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Yes, well, yes. I mean, what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please, proceed. You're not busy. No one could get in touch with you. Yeah, you wouldn't have been. If you went to his office before, you wouldn't have been able to see him. Um, what's a big matter? Okay, here to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg. Did you know? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? What with it? Well, sir, actually, it's about Maya. Maya Fay. Ah, uh, yes, my go. Huh? I have a strange reaction. Ja, ja. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? <laughs> Anyways, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent him. Sorry. End of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. Tell Maya. Just refuse like that, please. Tell me why you need the case. Well, you see, it's just what I'm busy, you see. The client is Mia Faye's sister. Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, of course. Yes. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll look out for I think not, I said. What does he mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. I'm terribly sorry, my boy. Why? I cannot say. I beg your pardon. Look at you. Now, I have nothing more to discuss. Let's talk no more, anyways. How did you know me a day? She worked a long time ago. Like the apprentice that one. Learn her techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day quite so. She had a mission. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never knew. Hardly the time or place to talk about it, but let's talk about that stupid painting. Ah, oh, you notice? It's my bargain dog. Impressive, isn't it? Well, he hasn't it! The colour of the sky, the heat of the sea, the wee of the, the, the straw hat! <laughs> it's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you! It's not for sale! I'm not buying! Please. Well, now we've gotten to know Marvin Grossberg a little bit more. Nothing else left to do but write the news. Hiya. You're back! Did you find a lawyer? Hmm, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I really don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. What happened? He didn't mean he refused to help. Um, you see, if you abandon them. I hate your family. I only had my sister. 
This is Ace Attorney. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well, this is sad as a person who had a friend. No. You know. Time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Someone has to look out for people who have no one on their side. I won't abandon you. Don't you count on me. Well, let's pick this one and get you out of here. Thank you! She smiled at last. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you can trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something bugging me. What was inside that strange woman's drawer? When I tried to look into the drawer, she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Smiley, smiley. That's the Maya we all Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are... Ah, I beg your pardons. I am the bellboy of this establishment. At your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service. Um... Sorry, talking lots. Do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe I'll guess Miss May is amazing. Facilities? If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy! Yeah. Wait, no, pink! 
Can I do the same, like, every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to sneak around a bit. Ah, I always forgot. God! Bring back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for me? Please tell her Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? Hmm. What's your name? My sister told me. I was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? Right. Oh, we haven't got much time, so we know what we came here for. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half open drawer. I can't see what's inside. What have we here? Oh, an ear tag? Hmm. Huh. What a woman like her. I don't have a secret like this. You know, when I first played this game as a child, I didn't know what a wiretap was. Same thing with that. <laughs> there is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. Alright. Well, using this bit of evidence while I'm trucking. That's for sure. From this. I'll get the woman's bottom. Wait, I mean. You know what that means. Uh oh. Time to scram. I look forward to continuing to talk with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. That's our first investigation segment. Done and out of the way. Time for court. Court, there is no exception for the trial. Maya Faye. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. I don't get I better not show any signs of weakness today. You'll be on me in an instant. Yep, the network is a whole different beast compared to pain. Mr. Ritchie, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Ms. Maya Faye, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence that she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to, better to doubt the facts of the case. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edward. Let's begin now. If we may call on her, if we may call on her witness, you are. The prosecution calls the chief officer of the scene, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Witness, please take your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. Yeah, Gumshoe's very frequently the first witness you've seen. Almost every case. I'm the detective in charge of homicide now in the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe the recipient of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this form map the office to explain. I that the body found by the window here. The cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck with a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the finger found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. You're still calling it a statue. Hmm. We have floor plans. No, detective. Yes, sir. You immediately arrested Ms. Maya Fetty, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. 
Detective, Detective Gum. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed her seat. There were two people there already. The defendant, Ms. Maria Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Ms. Maya Fay. I had a witness account describing The witness saw Ms. Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment you see. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine it. No contradiction in that testimony. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It's hard to at times. I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross examination. Right! With. Now, in our last case, we uh, presented evidence at between moments. But this isn't always a good idea. After all, if you present the wrong evidence, uh, your uh, credibility gauge will go down. And sometimes, uh, you just don't have any evidence that contradicts what you just claim. When, um, when that happens, that's now to press a statement. And here's what happens. Hold on just one second. Yeah. If I heard correctly, sorry. You said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Hmm? D did I just hear that? P. I I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about this suspicious woman in pink's claim was hard evidence? What? What is my use of suspicious, but she sure is a pink, Al. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough. Detective Gumsh. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. No, something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written in a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. The lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before he died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Before we begin the cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor. Why didn't you make a fight about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, I know. I'm embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. You'll be my cat. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Hello. On Twitch, I think Ben's mom asked if Ben could do away. So Ben's got to come do Feel free, feel free. Do away. Do up, you could say. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. 
I'm pretty sure the sound isn't properly synced up to the thing now. Sorry. Sorry about all that. I had a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. The word mine was written clearly in blood. The lab test results showed the blood of the victims. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before he died, the victim wrote the killer's name. I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey. That's really what you're saying. This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. He died immediately. No budding you out of this one, detective. Bud has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had time to write any meat down. Objection! Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon. When exactly did you obtain our approximate clue? When? It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point of being. Possibility the victim lived for several minutes before the blow. Oh. Uh, yeah, after. <laughs> uh, I received these salts this morning. Away! Your blood. That's quite a need to imagine the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I assume. Report. I thought it's a gumshoe. 
up living on, uh, on instant noodles exclusively. Yeah. I submit this report to the court. Oh, Understood. The court accepts the evidence. next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Says your partner is innocent. I say her looks. Witness, your name please. <laughs> Introductions do not require any reaction from the crowd. But with this one frame, I'm wanting to begin. Yes, Your Honor. This is not good. We already tapped the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Wow, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in nice lunch. And this hotel is the pretty across from the big so long. Sugary sweet, it's disgusting. Well, Your Honor, I see it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any way, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Rose, what about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite. Ugh! Didn't you? Mr. Royce, I understand you and Miss Mia Faze understand, will you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of only tiny faults is perfectly good testimonies. Hey! How dare you! Well, Mr. Royce, can you cross examine the witness? How glad to proceed with the cross examination. Only because I have a feeling Antwerp doesn't want me to. He has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross examination. Okay then. There's no apparent contradiction, so we'll have to pass the bait any statements that are obeyed. How do you know she was the defendant? Oh no, too late. 
Gastoni stinks. <laughs> Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. I can really see the defendant at all. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Someone tell me because I'm clueless about this and Okay, if you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I know it's not a fashion for her hair is more far from normal. So did Detective Gumption. What do you say to that, Miss Maggie? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw. I mean, just didn't think all the trouble and details were necessary, darling. Miss Maggie, I remind you, please admit nothing in your testimony. Sorry, you mean the Again, if you would. Damn, almost happened. He did see everything I did! A victim, a woman, dodged the first attack and ran out to the right. The McClellan and the Pippi Claws ran after her. After she killed her, the saw her, I did! The claw See, I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Not satisfied, because... 
did not serve me wrong. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. That clock is missing its clockwork. Chicken and a uh, chili sauce. Nice. <laughs> chili shrimp and chicken rice. Nice. Hmm. I made something similar for uh, my folks not too long ago, actually. That's cool. Mr. Drift, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> well, Miss May, disc twist. Hmm? Quite the show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. I'm afraid he forgot one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't read. However, we need that. When was the clock removed? The witness after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm. Ooh, that is opposite. The clock might have ended after she heard it. And then it's exactly what happened. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clock was removed? Oh, impossible, of course. I have great. Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, he was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. Evidence that proves when the clock was removed was... Take that! Take a look at this. Hmm, look at your cute sofa. Ooh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. <laughs> the defendant self says he sort of brought to my attention. That detective Gumshoe overlooked it. hear the conversation. So, you just want me to- So, you just wanted me to hold on to the fingers for you then? If you could. Um, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? Not working? That's lame. I had to trade the clock work out. Sorry. September 5th, 9.27am. You're on. I think this makes it clear. Already gone by the time it was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know about the weapon with a clock? Well, yes, anyone who paid attention to the last case would have an objection. The witness claims he had seen it before, but this still left the contradict the piece of evidence already submitted to this court. See, please produce some evidence that the witness has not seen the clock before. Take that! It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in the police custody. It's impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss 
to this conversation. That's how you knew the finger was a clock. Am I wrong? I... Objection! Your love, this is ridiculous. Your honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. The witness answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss Mary, shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You liar! Oh, you fuck me like that! Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? That's it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Time to deal with a final blow. There's no proof she actually did it, and we saw who did it in the opening. So we can only uh, so we can only get her down for what I think. Answer the question. <laughs> Exactly what Angela wants her to say. You 
name tapping the victim's bow. I hardly call that relevant. Starbucks or uh, or that other place. Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Here you go. The witness was not at the scene of the crime at the time of the murder. <laughs> so where does that leave us? It is my greatest pleasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. Oh, they're going to let her just walk away? There's no way I can win this unless I tie Ms. May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Well, I think it's something. We've got all we're gonna get out of this, Mandy. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. Something suspicious here, because I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you quite low enough already. Objection! I object to calling the bell. Why? For two reasons. Because of course, the That's why it happened. had nothing to do with the killing. Ever. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. 
Let's look at my thing now, guys. What's up? It's called Haku Haku. It's like a shopping center building game. Mm. Stuff. It's Japanese culture. Okay. Sorry about my sniffing voice. I'm ready. I hope. This is it. I can't prove Ms. May was involved from murder now. My old be finished. Right then. Boring! One thing to do if we don't know what to do. What exactly is it that you do at the hotel? Anything for the fire officer. I check in guests. I check out guests. I clean rooms. I make beds. I even deliver room service, sir. I check Miss May and Miss Lastly. Are you all so, so prim? Mr. Wright, who will refrain from asking frivolous questions? Yep, press every statement oh, really fine.
of my affair. Court is adjourned. Okay. We haven't got our not guilty yet, but we have but we fought some time. We're gonna reinvestigate. Mr. Front! one part 
card that hasn't been stricken from the record. The victim dodged an attack that ran the room. Hot and struck. I don't know how this gate is looking at all. Anyway, you hit the case and you'll see something back. Maya doesn't belong in that situation. And it's up to me to set her free. I've only got 30 minutes left. Let us go, man. Indeed. I want to at least get to the end of this investigation. Well, hello! I didn't expect anyone to visit me in such a dark, dang place like this. So it's really quite moving. Not! You sticking lawyer, I hope you die! Can you take a laugh? Yes! Laugh at the ball in Miss May! No, not really. There's something I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, there is nothing I want to be asked. Haven't you done enough questioning, you spiky head? Here we go again. Please, you're still the security guard. What do you wish to ask of me, then? Hmm? Sir, is going to get me so holy whacked. <laughs> Grossberg. Hmm, this is Grossberg's back today, again. Maybe he's avoiding me for some reason. I wonder indeed, where has it gone? Old photos? There are two lying here. Something has been written in pencil on the backs. DL6 incidents, Exhibit A. DL6 incident, Exhibit B. Take a look at these. I've seen this person somewhere. Can I still borrow this photo? I no one will miss one little photo. Might be a valuable clue. I'll take it for now. Exhibit A, huh? Let's take a look at Exhibit B. Oh, that person is. I see. That could be interesting. Ah, welcome, sir. Quite the performance today, if I dare say so myself. Oh, um, thanks. Sorry for putting you on the spot like that. No, no, not at all, sir. Your efforts today can only help the Gatewater's rep, as they say. Oh, rep? Yes, our reputation was swell as the hotel where the murderer used a wiretap. We could charge a premium for the room, of course. It will be great for business, sir. Is that real food? <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Miss May hasn't been charged with murder. I, too, will become famous. The bellboy who brought the murderer iced coffee. Why do I feel like we're both stuck in the same bad dream? So, you are our honored guest. Please, let me know if there's anything I can bring you. Well, we may as well. Uh, he's the only person willing to talk about the dude who was with Miss May, so we may as well talk to him. So I had to boast her from the moment I saw her. Do it, I said. Do what? Don't find a thing the most suspicious person here is this guy. <laughs> I'm going to ask you about the man who was with Miss May. Yes, he struck me as a real lady. If you'll pardon me, expression. I knew it from the moment I saw him. He and I are of the same ill. We both carry the sense of danger. There, we are in total agreement, Mr. Psycho Bellboy. If you had a photo of that man, I'm quite sure I could identify him. Oh, hmm. Well then, we might have one. Take a look at this photo. That's him, Detective. Um, I'm the lawyer. Oh, I know that. 
I just wanted to say detective once. You know how it is. No, no I don't. Without a doubt, that is the man who checked in with Miss April May. How about I write an affidavit swearing it's him? An affidavit? This guy's way too excited about it. Well, we may as well have him write it. Yes, I've always wanted to write an affidavit, sir. From henceforth, I would be known as the bell boy who swore the affidavit. Just hurry up and write it. Even Miss May can play under this. Well then, let's see if we can get a crack. Can't you take a hint and stay gone? Hey, the only reason I'm back here is because you won't talk to me. Oh, so it's my fault now. And you don't just have a spiky hair, you also have a spiky heart. That does it. In this case, it's done. I'm shaving my head. He won't really. He won't shave his head. Nah. It's iconic. What's that? The bellboy's affidavit. It tells us everything he saw. This is the man who checked in with him. Who was most definitely this guy. And then I'll get him somehow. Push it hard. This is it. All or nothing. Time to do a little blow. No, you playing dumb. If indeed that's an act. If you don't talk, I'm taking this info to the press. What? Even though you should have been witness to a murder, your little friend was missing. I'm sure the press would have a field day with his reputation. Ooh. Fine, I'll talk. If you if you try to eat her fears, she won't talk, and you'll have to go to Grasshopper for the info. Lawyer. Yes! Man, that felt good. Wait to yell at. Are you pumping your fist in the air? Now, tell us about the man you were with. That man? He's like us. Red White, the president of the Information Gathering Conglomerate, Blue Court. Red White. Information Gathering? Well, most of the colleagues are just activated. So this is the man that lived the night of the murder. It's scared to talk. Your man looks like her. It's okay. I'll just ask Mr. White himself. Can you tell me where Blue Corp is located? Sir Red White at last. Finally, a lead on this guy. If Miss April May couldn't have done it, that leaves him. We need to take action. Don't need the affidavit anymore? No. This is getting ridiculous. Where the hell is that loafer? Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh, you again. Hello, Mr. Grossberg. Well, well, you did the thing, my boy. A trial, the trial. He was there. Reminds me of myself when I was a youth. I guess something got passed round down from me up, baby. Brings back the memories it does. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. I apologize. I, it was all a bit too much for me, my boy. Seeing you today, I, well, I... I appreciate the reminiscing, but I'd much rather you give me some information. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if you fail to get the info from Miss May, you can present the photo to, um, the gross to get the info. Who is this man? Most likely in April May's room the night of the murder. Oh, uh, what did you say? I'm quite sure, my boy. Why has it so flustered, I wonder? I must ask him to leave me alone. Painting. What is with the surreal decor? Welcome! Please furnish me with the title of your personage! Your name? What's your name? 
I was just inquirably asking about the title that you go by. Right, he's right. I probably Mr. Right, is it? Yes, I see. Splendiferous! Perhaps I have intimidated you with my gigantesque vocabulary. What is this guy's problem? I'm Red White, CEO of Blue Pop, you know, Pawpet Expansion Official. My business feelings bring me into contact with the elite of the elite. So I'm afraid I am not used to conversing with the wordly changed. Fruitcake. Hmm, let me guess. You are an attorney fresh out of law school, are you not? That's the only explanation for why you would come to meet me like this. By that? No matter. So, what business does a mighty lawyer have with a man such as myself? Yikes, this guy's arrogant meters off the scale. <laughs> Correct, she was the secretariat. Was the deal she had done. Once she is done, you require her? Indeed, she is paid to parts of them. Tapping them is not in her job description. She does gather information for us as a part of the duty. But I assure you, we do not condone illegal methods. It is inevitable that she would do this. Scapegoats. Scapegoats make me think of goats. I've been scapegoated before. Huh? I've been scapegoated before. Uh, I'm doing alright. Well, on the night of the murder, we even need the maze hotel. You can say I seldom pay attention to mundane details such as time and place. My motto is, don't worry, be happy. Still, Mr. White, I have above the hotel calendar as stated on the record. He remembers you very clearly. No matter the bill would be saved, I'm still reports. You want me to speak with me on the witness stand? Although I doubt you'd be capable of doing that. I didn't the prosecution call him as a witness. Wrong, was it? Right. It appears you do not fully grasp your position here. I ask again, who are you? A lawyer? No, my feeble friend, a mere lawyer. What nick, zip, zip, znada. Just like that sorry excuse for an attorney, Grody Burger. What? Punched me! Well, Mr. Royal, what can you do, eh? Charge me with assault? Charge away, I welcome it, for it is you who will be found guilty. What? Leave my position. The police, of course, they hold me my bidding. So you say. And I wonder, is that kind of control really possible? I don't expect you to understand. It is a world beyond your comp compensation. Comprehension. Rosenberg. Mr. Grossberg, yes. And you must ask him, why is it that this painting of his hangs here? 
perhaps thank you to tell. Perhaps you can play in our manual if you like purely for personal profit. Um, hot, hot, kettle cold, he says you're black. Go now, skedaddle, there is nothing more to discuss. Hate him yet? We all hate this guy. Well, I don't think he knows me standing here. Maybe I should see my throat? Ahem! Giant Jehoshaphat! Oh, you! What's wrong? You look so pensive, like an old man at the end of his days. Hmm. I'm not senile yet. I was just thinking about this whole mess. It's really bothering him, that much is clear. So, a faint thing to visit. Oh? Mr. Grossberg, I have to admit, something has been bothering me. Oh, what is it? Alphabet Boy. It's just... Mr. Grossberg, sir, there was a giant painting game right there the other day, was there not? The one you said you had no intention of parting with? Well, I saw it. Today. It was in the CEO's boss office of Blue Red White's office. So, I suppose I should guess the word is a large, it's a large painting. Mr. Grossberg, I know you and Mr. White are connected somehow. Connected, you say? Yes, and I know what it is. Mr. White has something on you, doesn't he? Blackmail. Well, I think that means a fairly gaudy fruit. Very well, this may be the chance I've been waiting for. Maybe it's time to get the off the chest. But finding rest easy again. After all, you and me is understood. Perhaps it was fate. What's he talking about? Red White is a man who makes his living through intimidation. Blue Corp is a company that excels in finding people's weaknesses and retreat. I've been paying them for 15 years now. 15 years. Blue Corp is a DL6 person. You may have guessed. But photograph. Here. Mr. Grossberg said there would be clues. 
Maybe I should have another look. All the cases of sheep ever worked on a file here. They're in alphabetical order. Let's take a look. Which file should I make? Hmm, let's, let's go with S. Data. Data S. Looking for the W file reveals that White's removed all of it. And looking at the uh, other file uh, reveals that, um, uh, that Mia knew about uh, what happened between Grossberg and White. Well, no harm in looking through it, I guess. The biggest part is here at the end of the end. Suicide. Ew. She has a collection of suicide reports. Politicians? Policemen? She's writing on the in pencil. White! This is Mia's handwriting. Wait, I get it. Mia thought he was involved in these suicides. White drove the monks a... I can use these newspaper comments. Hmm, that's the most disturbing one. Okay, well that's confronting. Aren't you persistent? Sorry, there's something I have to ask you. Mr. Lawyer, I really hate having to repeat myself, but it seems the message has not yet penetrated your pit skull. Stop bothering. You try my patience further, I fear I'm in the steeple to Do I make myself clear? She's my parent. <laughs> Only clue me a left for me. I'd better make this one count. Mr. White, see this? It's an article describing the suicide of a politician. He was embezzling secret government funds. Then, one day, we were talking to the press. The very next day, he took his own life. Article in Mia's office. Mia? She has an article, a file filled with articles like this. Every one of them is labeled with a single word White. Mr. White, I know what you did with the politician. You were blackmailing him. Blackmail? Not just him either. You were threatening and coercing hundreds of others. You were involved in all the suicide cases Mia investigated. This company is built on blackmail. I'm right, aren't I? What a bizarre accusation. Is this wrong? What is it you should be doing now? Investigating me? No, 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 I think not. You should be searching for the one who killed Miss Mia. Secretary Dallas, hello. Is this wrong to be leaving now? Yes, sir. I'll send someone right away. Wait a second, Mr. White. Mia lawyer, as with Miss Mia. How dare you? 
I'll point the finger at you and you will be tried for these mere killings. The case is as good as settled. No lawyer has any work or defense. I get friends from the local lawyers association. You'll be given a lawyer so stupendously in that they make even you look forget. Detective Gumshoe reporting, sir. Blah, but Harry Potts. Right, actually, thanks, right. My friend's name is Larry. Oh, right, sorry, pal. But with that murderer, right? Detective Gumshoe, I present to you the man who killed Miss Mia Fay. What? Take this despicable human being into custody. Farewell, Mr. Wrong. Ooh, what a turn of events. Turn about. Mm. I can't believe it's only been a case since the first trial. My trial begins tomorrow. White's gonna set a trap for me. And the prosecution will be in on it, of course. Edward included. An attorney, an attorney was assigned to me by the state yesterday. I refused. I had an idea. Right! Mr. Wright! Oh, Maya! Anything like you want to do? are no longer realistic. Beginning a few years ago, a limit of three days was put on initial court trials. Almost all finished within a day, most with a guilty verdict. I never thought we'd end up in the defendant's chair myself for this case. With the true culprit appearing as the star witness. This is it! Tomorrow, it's me or him! How long we got left? Ten minutes. Definitely not enough. <laughs> but I'll try anyways. Thank you. 
guilty. So I make that my policy. Objection. I will. Um, I'll uh, leave. I'll uh, put an end to it here. Send your welcome. Thank you. Very embarrassing. Sorry. Hold it. Hold it. Want to show my shopping centre? <laughs> My throat is somewhat dead anyway, so it's kind of a relief. It's fun, I think you'll see my boyfriend, Tom, when he meets me, just like last year. Okay, ready? Be ready. Three, two, one. Objection! 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 My nice eyebrows, by the way, Phoenix. Thank you so much for your support, and I will uh, see you next year. Thank you all so much. Your ideas. <laughs>